So you wanna like expand your knowledge of DaVinci Resolve so you can become a better editor. Well, then you have come to the right place because in this video, I'm gonna share with you 10 tips that will appeal to all skill levels. So whether you're just a beginner getting into editing or a skilled professional who does this every single day, there is something for you in this video. So all of that stuff and more coming up. But first, if you're new here, my name is Billy Ripka and I make weekly DaVinci Resolve tutorials about different effects, transitions, and workflows that'll help you become a better editor. So if you wanna level up your editing skills, click that subscribe button and the bell notification to stay up to date on the newest videos put out. But let's get into it. So the first tip I have for all of you, my friends, is something called remote grading. So what this is, it is a blessing from DaVinci Resolve themselves. How many times have you cut up a project and reorganized the clips all around, and then at the end of your video, you had to go back and copy and paste the color grade to each clip that went with one another. So for example, if I had a color grade on this one right here, I'd also have to copy and paste the color grade for this clip to this one, this one, and this one. And if you're working on a big project, that's super annoying. So this is where remote grades come in. If we go into the color tab and at the top right, we open up the clips menu right here. What we can do is on this first clip, we can right click and go to use remote grades. Now you can see all of the matching clips have this pink square at the bottom right. So if I go ahead and bring up my gain like this, you'll also see those changes on every single clip. Moving on to number two, we have adjustment clips. Now this one is a must know because you can do so much with an adjustment clip, including making your own presets that you can use forever. So just keep watching. So an adjustment clip is a clip that you can apply color grades to, effects, zooms, and fusion work to without permanently affecting the footage below it. So to find an adjustment clip, you'll have to go into the effects library and then go down to effects, and then you'll see adjustment clip. To use this, you'll just drag it above whatever video clip you want, and then you can make any kind of adjustment to it. So if you look here, I can just make a zoom on the adjustment clip. So you may be asking yourself, why the heck did these make it to my list? Well, because you can also use these as a drag and drop preset. For example, I use this pop-up animation I made every single week, pretty much, for my videos. So instead of every single week, me having to make this effect over and over and over again, what I can do is make the effect within an adjustment layer like I did here. Then in the inspector tab, I'll just name it whatever the heck I want. Then in the media pool, I'll go to power bins and click on master. Now just go ahead and grab your adjustment clip and drag it into the master bin like this. So now every single time I wanna, I can just drag it out and there's the animation. Now, if you don't see power bins, what you'll do is go to view, go all the way down and check show power bins. Then you'll have it enabled. So when I add it to a power bin, what this means is as long as I'm using the same database, I will always have this effect I made in the power bins. So I could be totally working on another project, want this effect, just go into my power bins, drag it in, and there it is, it works. Number three, Kill DaVinci Resolve. While DaVinci Resolve is way more stable and way more reliable than Premiere Pro, it still has its moments. Sometimes out of the blue, it just crashes. And then you go ahead and restart the program, but guess what? It doesn't load. So what do you do? Well, you don't shut down your computer and you don't call Blackmagic Design. What you do is down on your taskbar, you right click and open up the task manager. Then in your processes, you scroll down and you find DaVinci Resolve right there. Then hit end task, then start it up again and it should work. If however, it doesn't open up, go back into your task manager and then scroll all the way down and find something called Fusion Script. Click on that and hit end task. Then you should be able to open up DaVinci Resolve. Moving on to number four, Live Save fam. Live Save is the thing I wish Premiere Pro had when I was using it. They had auto save, which pretty much would stop you while you're editing so it can save. Live Save and DaVinci Resolve will save in real time so that if for some reason it crashes or you have a power outage or something like that, you can just pick up, 
right where you left off. Thank you, Jesus. To enable Live Save, what you'll do is go to the DaVinci Resolve panel right here, and then under Preferences, click on User. Now you'll see Project Save and Load. What you'll do is check Live Save, then trust me here, check Project Backups. Seriously, I never thought I'd have to use this, but I have like four times and they were for pretty big projects, including one of my videos. And because I had the project backups, I was able to just go right back to the part before some big like error happened. So trust me, just enable it, okay? You'll thank me later. Now, moving on to number five, we have Quick Duplicate. I know this one is pretty simple and pretty straightforward for those of you who are advanced, but trust me when I say this, there are still a lot of people who are hitting Control C and Control V to duplicate their clips, and you don't have to be doing that. So to easily duplicate a clip, what you'll do is hold down Alt, then click on the clip that you want to duplicate and drag it up like that. It is as easy as that, it is a quick duplicate, so no more copy and paste for you guys, just duplicate. Now, moving on to number six, we have select all to the right of the playhead. Now, this is one of those shortcut keys that you just, once you have it, you never go back. Now, this is just one of those shortcut keys that you will just probably use all of the time. So, what it does is anything to the right of the playhead, it's gonna select. So, I have this keybind set up to A. So, anything to the right of the playhead is going to be selected, and anything to the left isn't. So if I wanna add something right here, I can just make a cut, then hit A and spread it apart just like this and add in whatever clip you want. Now, if you don't have this keyboard shortcut set up, what you'll do is go up to DaVinci Resolve under keyboard customization, then go to all commands. Then you'll type in select clip. Then hit the drop down arrow on select clips forward. And then you'll see right here, select clips forward on all tracks. You'll click on the keystroke right here, then whatever key you want it matched to, hit that one. Then hit save. So now, moving on to number seven, we have bypass layers. Now this one is just one that I have to show you for you to see why it's actually important. So on our timeline, we have some music right here with clips. So if I wanna cut this footage up and edit to the beat, so as I'm going through and making some cuts, on the video, I'm also making cuts on the audio, and you may accidentally delete part of the audio just like that. To completely avoid all of that, what you can do is hit this button right here. This is the layer bypass, and if you notice, it's on every single video track. Now if I continue to cut to the beat, you'll notice that it's not making any cuts on my music at all. So yeah, that one right there, I do at least five times on pretty much every single project. So it's pretty important. Now moving on to number eight. This one is called Bypass Color Grades and Fusion Effects. If you have either a lower end computer or you do a ton of noise reduction or really incredible like color grades or a lot of fusion effects like some of my guys out there, then your computer's probably gonna lag because of all of that. So you can temporarily turn off all of those effects and things that are bogging down your system by going up here on the edit tab and hitting this kind of rainbow circle button right there. Now you can see that it completely completely bypasses all of my color grades and my fusion effects right here. And if I want it back on, I just hit it again. Moving on to number nine is something that we all as video editors probably struggle with. That my friends is organization. And yet as a video editor or a filmmaker, if you start to misplace footage, that could be a lot of money that you lose. So, now most people will have their video editing structure like this, and then they would just go into their footage, grab their A roll or B roll or whatever, drag it in, then create a bin called A roll, and then drag that A roll footage into the bin. Then you would go on and do that to B roll and screen shares and pictures and all of that other stuff. Well, the days of doing that, my friends, are over. So what you can do instead is go into the cut tab and just above the media pool, you have this option called import media folder. 
you hit that. Then in your media browser, find the footage that you're gonna be using for this project. Then just hit select folder and then the bin pops up. And if you click on it, you'll see that everything that was in your folder structure originally is also here. So you're able to import your folder structure as bins and that is just awesome. Now onto our final tip. This is truly something that everybody who uses DaVinci Resolve needs to do. Empty the cache folder. DaVinci Resolve makes incredible amounts of cache files to the point where you'll have hundreds of gigabytes taken up by just your cache folders. So every once in a while, you'll probably start to run out of hard drive space. Before you go out and buy a new hard drive, just follow me right here. So first, what you'll do to find your cache folder is go down to the bottom right to the project settings, scroll down to where you see cache file location, then hit browse, and then you'll see your current cache folder location right here. So you close that and go into your file explorer and find that exact file. So to get to mine, it's under this PC, local disk, users, Billy, all the way down to videos, and I can see cache clips. This is the file that I set up for DaVinci Resolve cache. So instead of me just deleting the whole file, I want it to stay there, I just want it to be empty. So I'll click on it and I'll hit Control A and then hit delete. And now it's just gonna go ahead and delete all of those files and permanently delete this and then you, then you wait. 277 gigabytes, oh my gosh. All right, so there you have it, the 10 tips that you should know about in DaVinci Resolve. Now, if you're all about editing effects and transitions, then I got something awesome for you. I created an awesome drag and drop shape transition pack that I truly believe will help you make your videos look cooler faster. So if you wanna add that sick style to your videos, click that link in the description to get them today. Anyway, if you want more videos like this, click on the top playlist for all of my DaVinci Resolve tutorials or click on the bottom for a video that YouTube thinks that you would like. But until the next one, peace.